Now for a movie rant break, One Up presents a movie rant break. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the movie rant break. Today, going over an older film. Today, I got returning guest John Smith in the building. Hey, you already know what the fuck going on. It's John Smith. We in this bitch. You already know what the fuck it is. Hey, <laughs> so me and John Smith going over Top Gun, which came out back in 1986. It was directed <clears throat> by Tony Scott, written by Jim Cash, Jack Epps Jr. And it was starring Tom Cruise, Kelly McGillis, Val Kilmer, Anthony Edwards, Tom Skerritt. Cinematography by Jeffrey L. Kimball. Music by Harold Falter Meyer. That's one name total, or two names in one. I said it like Falter, like syllable. I said it in the syllables. Anyways. It's okay. I'm doing good. You know the name? I'm trying so hard with these names. Uh, Runtime 110 minutes. Budget of 15 million. Ready? Box office, what do you think they did? At least 500. Really? At least 500 in the 80s? Maybe 400. 357.3, oh, okay. right. which is a shitload. A shitload. 15 million? Yeah. That's a, that's, we reviewed Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? Yeah. Also an 80s film. Mm-hmm. It was like, I think, what? 30 or something like that. I don't know if you want to like peep it real quick. Like what would it cost to do any the, of the budget? Because I remember it was really low and they did they were really successful at the box office. I got it. But okay. the um yeah, the, 20 mil. 20 million. Okay, yeah. so it's same threshold. Rares the Lost Ark, 20 million. I mean it cost them 1.8 just to get the Jets. Which is kind of crazy. And yeah. and I kind of just like before we get into it, I do want to touch on how I really appreciate older films. Taking less to make better films, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Like the the notion where Disney drops 120 million on a throwaway film is it's disgusting. It's insane, and I, a lot of it has to do with the fact that like they just overuse VFX and um, they think spectacle is what people really want. When like at the end of the day, like I think you can accomplish spectacle with a lot less for sure. You know? Yeah, and Creatively. still make it feel larger than life. Which I think this film is kind of like that in some in some forms. Like it captivates a certain scope. For this certain topic with like fighter pilots and jets. So, yeah. hey, uh, before you brief breakdown, I want to just let everybody know here that you have yet to see Top Gun Maverick. Oh, good point. So, like this this whole thing is kind of cool because we have a chance to to review Top Gun. I've already seen both, obviously, but like obviously, it, but you have the chance to review Top Gun with also being yeah. able to like not have to have ever seen the new one. Yeah, I was. That, um, thank you for bringing that up. I was trying to keep this uh, contained to the 1986 Top Gun film with the review versus seeing both. Well, you made it no option for yourself. Because <laughs> you, 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 I was saying, you know what I'm saying? If I watched the Maverick. I know what I'm saying. At this point, you made it no option. You can't even choose to not make it contained. It's it's, it's contained. Yeah, I know. But that's what I fucking wanted. You I fuck. know. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, so... Also, so that like the 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 listeners can kind of get a non bias take on an older film, and then we're gonna check out Top Gun Maverick in the next couple of days or whatever, mm-hmm. and review that as well. So, uh, thank you for bringing that up. That's the situation right now. I haven't seen Top Gun Maverick. It was the number one film in the U.S. If I'm not mistaken, in 2022. So, it felt appropriate to review that. Wanted to do this one first, so I knew what the fuck was going on. And to on. give you credit, you're not a Tom Cruise fan. Not like, a Tom Cruise fan. So like the fact that you're here, I I I, I appreciate it because I I very I enjoy most Tom Cruise movies. Like I don't dive into the Mission Possibles and stuff too much. I've watched some of them, but like I like Tom Cruise as an actor. You don't, and that's kind of why you've hesitated on this one. And I understand that, but like I'm glad you're here because it's worth it. You're glad I'm here. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I'm glad I'm here. Hey, hey. The people are glad you're here. But it, yeah, in my defense, like top or Tom Cruise, he's um, I don't think he's a bad actor. But I don't buy some of his shit as far as like his roles that he chooses to play, um, which is valid. He's fucking like five four or whatever. Yeah, pretty sure he's taller um, than that. But he's still. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah we'll get into it. But 
that's why I haven't seen Top Gun Maverick. Being it was the most popular movie this year. The reason I didn't see it, I don't really care for Tom Cruise. That's why I haven't reviewed it. But people keep talking about this fucking film. I mean, so. to be fair, I never saw this prior to when Top Gun Maverick was coming out. I was yeah. going to go see it. So I was like, oh, I feel like it's necessary to come to see this movie first. I never saw it growing up. I never saw it as a kid. I never really knew about it. I'd always kind of heard about it, but I never knew it was like a thing thing until I realized how big it was and how like, you know, how uh, important it was for American culture and and yeah. uh, a big of a cultural splash it made, you know? Cultural splash. So eloquently put. Uh, okay. I'm a genius. So you're a genius? <laughs> yeah, because this People consider this, it's a classic, and people, it's in their top favorite films, which I'm surprised, but not. I mean, the 80s was kind of the upswing of higher production films, I think. So It's 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 a big achievement for the time, for sure. I think so. But we can go, we can, we can get into that. We can do it. All right, so brief breakdown. People that don't know, uh, the film play, takes place back in 86 focuses on an elite group of fighter pilots in a school called top gun that's for all the top they say one percent naval fighter pilots navy fighter pilots whatever and I, I did look up approximately how many pilots there are here it's about a thousand they said that get their wings their golden wings which they say typically people get them between 75 and 98 weeks that's what google told me mm. Um, oh, in their flight school. Oh, dumb. So they're jet training. So th- I think depending on how good you are, you get between 65 and 98 weeks. So every year there's a thousand new pilots that accomplish that. Got it. So, so Top Gun's like 1% of that. Was it 10 people? Yeah. But they were saying in the film, it's, there's like, the woman says she spoke to classes like that every eight weeks or something. So I don't know if it's just other fighter classes, but yeah, I think... They're alluding to the fact yeah, I think Top Gun's once a year, so I, I, she was probably alluding to other classes yeah. that she teaches. Yeah. So, okay, getting into it. Um, all right, what what do you think of this film? Um, I mean, to start off, like, spectacle is, is something that I kind of want to touch on. Like, the fact that they were able to achieve what they achieved back then is pretty fucking sweet. They shot a lot of it in real jets. Um, they had... And they also had stunt pilots as well. Um, actually, the stunt pilot who who was um, Maverick's stunt pilot ended up being an astronaut, like in real life. It's pretty fucking sick. Oh, for real? Yeah, he went on to be like an astronaut and go into outer space. Interesting. Whether outer space is real and the Earth isn't flat or not, but <laughs> it's for a different podcast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, uh, so it was, it was pretty sick, sick that they were able to actually get those jets. And like, I was doing a little bit of digging before we hopped in, and come to find out like Tom Cruise didn't want this role at, e- at all. And neither did Iceman's uh, actor. I forgot. Val, Val, yeah. He didn't want the role at all either, but Tom Cruise pushed back and then they were actually going to get John Travolta for it. And like, they went with some, almost some other people. Nicholas Cage is another name. They tried to get a bunch of people, Tom Hanks, but then they ended up pushing back on Tom Cruise to get him to do it. And I guess the way they did it is they threw him in a jet and he went up there and he like threw up and was like, got super nauseous. And like, but when he got back onto the ground, he was like, that was the fucking best thing I've ever done in my fucking life. Like, I'm definitely doing this movie. Like, fuck yeah, put me back in one of those. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. I also, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Tom Cruise flies planes now. Like, he has yeah. his own jets. So yeah, he's he super does. into it. Yeah, he is super into it. But I think this is the movie that did it for him, which is pretty fucking sick. Especially yeah. considering he was something that he didn't want to do. Yeah. Uh, this film... Is super 80s, as a lot of staples of 80s films, whether it's Indiana Jones yeah. or Top Gun or whatever, they feel very 80s to me, especially the music scores and stuff oh, like that. So 80s. Uh, also, quick side note. Take my PG. breath away. <laughs> Yo, <Dude. laughs> the, the overuse of the songs that they used was bad by the second half. Outrageous. <laughs> the Danger Zone joint? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The intro with Danger Zone was Fire. cool. Yeah. But they used it three or four times. It felt... But it was... But it really Take Your Breath Away was literally probably six times. And it's funny. I guess the director really liked Take My Breath Away and liked it so much that they added in more romantic scenes because he liked the song so much. Fair. <laughs> I, fucking fire. It, they're not bad songs. It's just... <laughs> 
OD. The overuse of those songs <laughs> in yeah. any movie is not outrageous. <laughs> outrageous. I mean, the the thing that stands out the most to me about this movie is like how homoerotic it is. Like, it is so gay. It is extremely gay. Like the whole fucking movie is like really. There's so much male sexual tension, and it, like they're constantly making dick jokes and like. At one point, he like like one of the guys looks over and he's like, he says something like, "Oh, like I'm 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 getting a hard on." He's like, his friend looks at him. He's like, "Don't tease me." Like, like what? Like, yeah, chill the a, fuck out, dude. But that, to, in fairness, I feel like <laughs> friends will be yeah, and they also get really sweaty and just like hang out with shirts off around each other like constantly They're and like the in though. towels yeah. and then like play volleyball and like. You know, slapping each other's hands and Super rubbing up sweat. against each other. Super <laughs> it's bro so sweat. gay, dude. There's actually a theory that I've read online a couple times that like, uh, like Mav and Iceman were like digging each other, and like the whole thing was like their his jealousy about like Goose and everything. It was just funny. Like I just <laughs> the whole thing was like, like that they're just gay. Or it was a little sus. It was so gay, but, which is good. I it's which is it's good. fucking hilarious. Like I love how like much they push that. Like and I think that's kind of probably why like the the people who were looking at it originally were like the actors. They're like, I don't want to do this. Like, this is really weird. You know, they executed well, but they did. It was flawless. Or maybe they were having so much fun. It just, (laughs) don't tease me. (laughs) I mean, that's fine. You you talk about Val Kilmer's character and the sexual tension. I thought the psychology and the situation with Maverick and Iceman in the air in the beginning was cool like how or no it was Maverick the beginning was Maverick and Cougar when yeah. they were flying and just the way they were communicating and then just if it was interesting just to see how they started and how the fighter pilots were communicating I guess I don't know and just because you don't really know how that go and that's why sometimes I you know take things with a grain of salt with films because are they depicting this correctly and sometimes, even if it is off base, it seems interesting that that could be a possibility of how things go up in the air. Right. And I also thought the dynamic of Val, Kil- Val Kilmer's character, uh, the Iceman, was interesting because he was a bad guy that didn't really feel like a bad guy, right? Like when he, he wasn't trying to fight him because they were on the same side. Mm-hmm. And I really empathized with Val Kilmer's character, Iceman. Because he wanted Maverick to fly a more safe way for everyone's sake. Because he was flying dangerously. Recklessly, yeah. And the irony I thought in it as well was that Val Kilmer was kind of, or the Iceman, was the reason why Goose died. Because his, when he pulled back, his jet stream fucked up Maverick's plane. And then led to them having to evac the plane and killing Goose. Yeah, it wasn't technically his fault, but yeah, it, it could have played a contributing factor. Yeah, he contributed to Goose's death, regardless. Even if Maverick was flying recklessly, or which whatever. is funny because, like you said, he's supposed to be the safe one and the one who plays it safe. And, and he plays everything. a part in it and ends up being playing a part in the death of Goose. And it's I just thought it was interesting. Mm-hmm. Like to say the least of that whole. How dynamic. do you feel about Cougar getting all like weird when he was at the beginning after he got like you know lined up by that Mig? Like, did you do? Do you feel like like first of all, do you feel like shit like that would actually happen? Like, do you feel like somebody would like lose their fucking mind just because they got like like you know lined up? You talk about the right at the, the beginning. Oh, the, 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 where I was talking about the psychology of them talking. And, yeah, and how he get, he like lost his fucking mind and then he like needed to get flown in. Like he, cause he's like, I haven't even met my kid yet and I, I almost died, you know? I think it's relevant. I think they try to keep this film as relevant as possible with situation, situational shit that happens. And I think even in the military, you could empathize that that's a thing where people go off and they don't see their newborns and their, they yeah. miss their spouses. So they start acting crazy because they don't want to be where they're at. And then you add the element of them being in the air on fighter jets. Yeah, it's wild. And being it was intense. I mean, like imagine like you you don't know what's gonna happen because they haven't engaged yet. You don't know if they're they're gonna they're gonna engage. Your commander's telling you do not engage unless fired upon, and you're just like 
up there in the sky not knowing what the fuck to do you think you might die right then and there like your death is on the line like in yeah. y- your life is on the line i guess i should say but yeah it was i, I thought it was interesting i it's funny you used to talk about the military the military actually funds movies like this so even though they had to pay to get the jets the military pays for portions of the movies because they use them as like ways to get people to go to the military. It's like a recruiting method, right? So they actually partially fund these movies. And so in the original script, I guess Cougar was supposed to crash uh, the plane at the beginning and die. And that was supposed to be why Mav actually got the spot in Top Gun. Mm. And they said that the military told them not to do it because they didn't want people to like, they didn't want to like show attention on how dangerous it is to actually land a plane on a carrier. They didn't want that for recruiting purposes. They don't want people to think that like discourage them. Yeah, from exactly. Oh no, this fuck this is too yeah. dangerous. So it was interesting that you talk about that because like yeah, militaries always kind of play roles in these military movies, and that's why it's always glorified because it's a way to get people to be excited about going to yeah. war and you know get involved. So yeah, that's an interesting point. You you talked about the homoerotic situations. <laughs> I was going to bring up the awesome volleyball montage. Dude, it was so, so epic with the 80s shit. And yeah, you even asked me, you were like, is that in the new movie? And I was like, I'm not fucking telling you. <laughs> I hope we see the volleyball montage again. Cause it was fantastic. <sighs> so um, many shirtless, shirtless, sweaty men. Yeah. And their outfits are funny. Like he was wearing jean jeans. If you no went to go watch this, like in the eighties and you were like questioning your sexuality as a man, like this would have flipped you gay, easy. Okay. Oh yeah, easy. You'd walk out of that. Mo- you would have walked out of that and been like, "I need to go fuck a dude." <laughs> but you say that. But I was gonna talk about on the heterosexual end. There is that teacher student love story situation, which is fire, which is kind of hot. Yeah. But it also the way it's done in the eighties, and I'm not trying to shit on their style, but. It fe- this film felt like a military soap opera. I don't think it's that cheesy, personally. Because the end, it does what it does. But if if it ended after Goose dies or shortly after, it's a military soap opera. Yeah, there's that end sequence where it's like, like gets kind of badass. Real war, yeah. But that's it. Because <laughs> I was that. That's it. That's I, <laughs> I just think soap operas are cheesier. But yeah, I, it is. It is very dramatic. It's like a, it would be a drama, a military drama, I guess is what yeah. I would say. Because I also thought the film was going to be more... Romance flick. Yeah. What? No, I just drama, romance flick. Yeah, yeah like a rom yeah. something. Rom military. I don't know. <laughs> rom opera. <laughs> the I also... <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want to know a fun fact? Yeah. So the reason they call them soap operas is because primarily the, the ads and commercials were for soaps soap. and detergents. You got to clean yourself, bro. But well, that's just funny to me because that's why I call them soap. Because yeah. I never knew that, but the reason they call them soap. It makes so much sense, bro. It does. Your tears all- are salty. And if you don't use soap, uh, there'll be salt left on your face. Okay. What did you think of the s- student teacher... I, I dug it. And, you know, like, I, I think the love thing they had was was fun i love how top gun is supposed to be this like pimp like mad bitches and shit you know what i'm saying he like he flexing on them like hella bitches like they always talk about how many bitches he got right in top gun the first one yeah like fucking uh goose was like talking like even when they oh, walk yeah, in the club yeah, 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 yeah they're talking about how many bitches he got um but he played like hard to get with her a little bit you know what i mean like when he went to her house the first time like he didn't like Try to make a move. He just up and left. Well, she also denied him at the bar the first time. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? He's a stud. You know what I'm talking about? And you know what my favorite part about it is? Is that I think cliche, it would have been her that got him convinced to stay. Right? But she failed. She was like, you should stay after he was deciding to leave. She fucking failed. He decided to go back and talk to Viper. Right? The yeah, the commander the, and then the commander is who convinced him to stay, which I felt was military ass. Yeah, it's dope. I fucked with that because it was like she uh, she didn't do it. She didn't do it. No, no, I fucked with that. It would have been too like oh I stayed for the girl. Like nah, she up and left. We didn't even see her for the rest of the movie until the very very end. You know what I mean? And he still stayed. Like that's hard. That's hard. That's hell hard. He's a pimp. Did you think the scene where Goose dies was a tense to crash scene? Because I thought it was. Oh yeah. 
It was the best scene in the film. Yeah, though. and it was like sad. And that, I think that's one thing that I really like about these older movies is that older movies have more patience spending time with really emotional, important moments. Whereas like new movies are so like death is such a normal thing in movies now and like people dying and like, yeah. so they don't make a big deal out of it. They're like, oh, somebody died. That's sad. Quick funeral, move on or something. You know, like yeah. it's never... We there was a solid like thirty minute runtime of Top Gun just going through the emotions of how he felt because of, of his best friend, his only family, as he said, you know, dying. You know, that's mm-hmm. fucking crazy. We we talked we touched on that in the Indiana Jones show where you're just more invested in the film because they take the time to develop certain characters and story arcs where the death that does occur is dramatic where now it's like, you know, someone punches someone and they die and you're like, and then you punch someone else and they die. And you're like, and you're like whatever. All right, cool. I guess he just dies. Yeah. It's, uh, it was cool. And I really liked their relationship, their friendship. I thought was really, really cool. The fact that they were that close. Um, especially cause like top, uh, I mean, uh, Maverick kind of talks about his past and talks about the things he went through and how his dad's gone and all that stuff yeah. and just how he had no real family. And then I liked how close Maverick was with, <clears throat> Uh, Goose's wife and kid, like Ryan. yeah, like they were, yeah, they were, yeah, exactly. They she were was baddie in that, super uh, baddie. She and she was so fun and like cool. Like I, I don't love her. The the chick that Maverick was going after was kind of basic. Yeah, I wasn't feeling. She her, was like a honest. Peggy from Marvel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she wasn't. Like Ryan was baddie. Yeah. She was like Peggy, better than her for sure. Facts. Yeah. yeah, and and I just think fucking uh, Tom Cruise has the funniest body ever. Like his his chest is so watery, it's like it looks like a who's waterfall on his right on his chest. Who's homoerotic now? <laughs> I'm shitting on him, dude. Wow. Pause. <laughs> Get a plate. <laughs> oh, so shit. you were you were mentioning something about the way they filmed it. They did have real jets. Yes. Because that was one thing I was trying to look up how much of real flying was going on. Yeah. It's hard because and I was mentioning it to you before where a lot of things are convoluted on the internet right now. You type in Top Gun, it's Top Gun Maverick everywhere. Everything. Yeah. So yeah. uh they did use real just real pilots. It's not like fake model shit. Yeah, which- actually one of the um stunt pilots died and Nuh-uh. they dedicated the movie to him. Yeah, he passed away uh in the filming. He he his his uh, plane crashed, landed into the ocean, and he died. Wow. Yeah. So, like, it was all, like, they were flying a lot, and they had camera rigs that were set up inside the planes. Everybody threw up um, on, on, every actor threw up from flying, except for Goose's actor. Goose didn't throw up. Goose is a G. Yeah, he's a G. R.I.P. Goose. Yeah, they all went up there. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of, like, the explosion stuff were all models. It looked like models, like little model jets. Yeah, they're not going to blow 30 million planes. Yeah. And I'm assuming some, when the actors are in the cockpit, they did a good job at keeping it condensed so you couldn't see the surroundings too much. So it felt like they were actually flying it. Mm-hmm. Like I would assume, obviously they're not um, in the jet when they, they were. were, they have a camera ray set up specifically for the jets in 1986 top gun. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty fucking Who's crazy. flying the fucking plane? They had the other person flying in it and they were in it, in it, not flying it. Interesting. And probably not for all the shots, That's what but I'm saying. for a lot of them, because the actors were in the planes up in the air, <clears throat> spinning That's around. Intense. Yeah, and they, that was, and then like, um, obviously there was certain shots from the outside that were not the actors. It was all the stunt people. Yeah. See, I would say for this film, the coolest part of the film is the jet part, naturally, and how committed these people were to making this film. Yeah. Outside of that, I don't really care about the film, but I can just tell that that notion alone is really respectable, super cool, and badass. Like, yeah, I I love Mav's character. Like, he's such a G because he's just yeah. like reckless and an idiot, but he's also super skilled and talented. And there's a lot of people I know that are like that in in my life that are <laughs> reckless and retarded, and wow. <laughs> but are also very talented. Um, <clears throat> That's so rude. <laughs> but no, for real. Like, there's people who have a lot of skill and talent in the world that just are crazy as fuck. And I love that because it, it really, he really did a good job. And they wrote in a really good job at showing how his character is. And I respect it. it. And then also just the relationships. Uh, I, I guess, aside from the relationships, I really like how, and you kind of, you know, talked about this a little bit, but I really like how. 
this movie didn't have to have a villain, like an overarching villain and like a bad people. Like we talked about a little bit before we hopped on the show that like the MIGs aren't even any country. Like they went out of their way to make sure that the, no, they weren't a country and they still were able to make this movie work because they focused on like internal conflicts and uh. relationships. And that was where the driving factors of a lot of the actions were. And I think that's so important because I think too many movies now are so cookie cutter in the, in the sense of good guys, bad guys, drama build up, And then it's over. This was like the drama and build up was when goose died, for example. And then we had a, a point at the end that there was more drama that came in, but it wasn't because of a huge build up towards this climax or something like that. It wasn't like that, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. I really liked it. It was creative. Yeah. I like the, I think what you're touching on is human like interactions and really focusing on that rather than some other superficial, non-important element to whatever 100%. studio is trying to portray. Yeah, uh, There was some things that they did that they don't need to add in films that were fiction that you couldn't do. The fact that Maverick was such a rule breaker, if you will, you can't fucking zip by the fucking towers that are communicating with other jets. And the fact that the Fly character by, yeah. doing flybys, and I don't know what, like the first one they did, okay. I, I just thought that was like a, both of them were just unnecessary, trying to make the character seem more of a, uh, what, like a badass or just rule breaker. I don't know the yeah. correct I mean, there's, but. so, so <clears throat> actually it's funny that they said there had never been a flyby at this uh, place where they filmed it. And uh -huh. the stunt pilots were arguing about who got to do it for the shots <laughs> because they're like, this has never fucking happened. Like, I want to fucking, oh, I want to no be the shit. one to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No so shit. you're right. Yeah. It's super against the rules. They would have got court martialed and been done for um, in real life for sure. But um, I do think that there's some kind of credibility behind Mav, like, the general, whatever his name is, Viper, yeah. he knew his dad and stuff. So, like, maybe there would have been some leeway there. Probably not. But doing it twice, yeah, you would have fucking been done. Yeah. No matter and, what. And it's something I always bring up when I'm talking about films is what, why do you got to make it? Like, even back in the 80s, they were doing that extra shit. They, Hollywood's always doing that extra. And some films don't... A lot of films don't do that, but they're, you know, the big blockbusters. They, they can't help themselves but right. add this, this little mini part of a scene to make his character seem a certain way or uh, whatever. It's, it's like, so fun talking about this movie with you not seeing the new one. Cause there's so much stuff running through my brain as to like, that's how we did it. Like yeah. This. It's fun. It's fun. Like I'm having a good time and I'm sure that everybody who's watching is probably doing the same thing right now. They're like, Oh, if you only knew that, like this and this and this, you know, yeah, it's super no, fun. that's what's going to be cool about it. Yeah. Uh, you, you, in that last excerpt that you just mentioned, you were talking about how they didn't want to make a, distinct villain and i was i was touching on the fact that you know val kilmer's character ironic how he played a part in the death and um ended up kind of like killing his friend not killing him but like he was the villain but wasn't yeah and he ended up ironically playing a part in his death and then with the enemy it technically uh, a mig is russia it's a russian plane it's a russian plane but yeah. the planes in here were f5s that they had painted black i guess yeah and they weren't actually MIGs, but they don't tell you, they don't say Russia. Not once. The and they, they make it very MIG. clear not to say who they're fighting against. Which I thought was cool because I actually was wondering who they were fighting. And I had to look it up and I like how they. They're in the Indian Ocean, which is like super neutral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that's cool how they did all that. And yeah, so well done. Yeah. And it's, and you were saying too that it's a lot different than what we're used to nowadays. Nowadays it's very clear who the bad person is and yeah. it's very clear who they, what country they're from and if they're Al Qaeda or whatever, it's like very clear in most movies. So seeing kind of them being more discreet. Yeah. Foreign policy neutral, I think Vague. was, yeah, yeah, it was definitely a, a breath of fresh air. It didn't make it so much about these are the villains. These are the bad guys. We need to stop the bad guys. It was just about this internal conflict and this happened to be part of it, which is dope. Yeah, definitely interesting and well done. When I was watching this film, it also made me realize how superior airplane warfare is. <laughs> 
compared to being on the ground or tanks or whatever. You those planes are going very fast, extremely fast, and they're just such a force to be reckoned with. Even back then, I know even now they're probably super gnarly. Yeah, which they just made a new Top Gun, so it's going to be interesting to watch it. We're gonna have to watch that at least that because as we're talking about it, like I want to check yeah, it out. Yeah, it's yeah for sure. So. Yeah, for, as far as forms of fighting go, fighter jets are gnarly as fuck. It's reckless, and it's kind of always been reckless. Like they kind of alluded to it at the beginning of this movie, where they were where they were saying it was thirteen to one in World War Two or something when it came to American uh, jets shooting down. I don't know uh, German jets or whatever, and then it got smaller in Vietnam, thir- three to one. And the reason was because they didn't do; they got too dependent on missiles and not dependent up enough on dogfighting. And I thought it was really cool because that's why they put Top Gun into place is to get people better at dogfighting. And that's kind of what you get to see throughout the entire film is Very what it looks cool. like to dogfight. And dogfighting has always been a thing. That's what in World War II. That's what you only could do. You didn't have missiles, so you had to just dogfight everything in the sky. Mm, um, cool. But yeah, it was all skill based. I guess is more of what that's it is. Cool. Um, but dogfighting, I think, is one of the most crazy shit in the military that's the term to, yeah, to that's think about two planes up there just jets going neck and neck going fucking mach 2 and shit it's just, how fast is that it's really fast i don't know they're breaking the sound barrier so i don't know and like they'll disrupt it's a lot of like when they when they drove or they flew by the towers and stuff there was mm-hmm. physical disruptions yeah. among the sound disruption as well which is it's I mean, if you've been to a professional game, you they fly over. Their- Breathtaking. It really is. It like, is. I, it, I won't even lie. Like I, last time I saw a flyover was in Lambeau Field on opening night last year. It's intense. So, Twenty twenty one, and I teared. I couldn't help swag. myself. I couldn't it's help myself. It's just. It's, it's so intense. It's uh, and it comes out of nowhere because you don't see it because you're in the bowl and all of a sudden you just you're like. Woo, and the sound comes second, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh shit, yeah, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, that's uh, tight. It's fucking reckless. Uh, uh, I think this film also had iconic lines that have been potentially used here and there, but I think might have been the origin of some of them. One, two of them that I noticed, one was you can run, but you, you can run, kid, but you can't hide. Yeah. I don't know how much of an origin this was but if you type it in google top gun is the first thing that comes up yeah so i don't know if that's where that phrase comes from right and people say that all the time so also the term wingman so the term wingman like didn't exist before top gun i can believe that and that's like such a common thing to say now like i say wingman on a like weekly basis probably you know yeah there's a monthly i guess yeah there's there's probably so many things i overlooked because it's such common lingo now or phrases yeah but this film i think could have been you know the forefather of some of these phrases another one was it's classified if i told you i'd have to kill, kill you. you yeah and i was like is that the first time that's been said probably yeah <laughs> which is dope yeah. so i feel the need the need for speed first time i've ever said Swag. and like they yeah, they made a whole video game called Need for Speed. Need for Speed. You know? So. I mean, we can't... I mean, yeah, we can give it how we can have it. I mean, okay. So there's so many cool things about this film. I really respect it. I don't want to take anything away from it. I know I'm from a different era. And it's not always fair to compare almost apples to oranges with these films. Because this is 86. This was at its, the pinnacle of filmmaking at the time. Definitely respect it. But I... I always believe there's something to be said about something that can be timeless. Mm -hmm. And so, and some of these eighties films just aren't like, this is timeless, but in a corny, quirky kind of way, like there's elements like the, the fighter pilot shit. That's still really cool. Like I fuck with that, but the it's, it's the acting and the writing and, but I I would be curious to ask someone who watched this when it came out and ask them if it was quirky and corny when it came out. Cause I feel like it was, I feel like that's kind of like, where they were going with it which is fine you know so that ties into like the other element for me with okay the the times and you know what's really going on here with the film comparatively and also do i even like this type of film right and it was okay like i i will never watch this movie again ever yeah Yeah. ever that's you know it's funny i said the exact same thing I said the exact same thing that I'd never watch it again and that I watched it again today. And actually on the second watch, 
it was more enjoyable because I wasn't so invested in the story. I was just kind of sitting back and enjoying it. And it was nice. It was a nice experience. Um, plus, watching it the second time was easier to follow what was going on in the air. Like, I remember the first time I watched it, I was pretty, like, overwhelmed by, like, the cuts and the different shots. And I was kind of, like, confused about how they were putting together the fights. And this time, I don't know why. I think it was just because I wasn't so, like, whoa, this is the first time I'm seeing this. Like, it it was easier to kind of follow those scenes, the action scenes. So, there was some definitely benefits. But when I first saw it, I said the same thing. I was like, I'm never going to watch this again. Yeah, I don't, not because cool. of any other reason why I just, I just then just, I don't care. Mm-hmm. It's just not. And, and that's like, a, and I, I like, I don't mean to reiterate myself a lot with this notion, but it's some of these films, the scores drop a couple of points. Cause I just don't like these type of movies. Right. And it's, and preference. that's, it's yeah. Preference. So it's, that's the reality of it. I'm not just because, there's a couple elements of the film that really stand out the whole test of times. I don't think that makes it, you know, one of the best movies of all time. I just don't think that's, there there are some face value films that are just fucking gas, like wizard of Oz gas. Like that was so old. It's still gas and it's gas for so many reasons. Can't wait to do that review coming. Hopefully soon this winter, I'm going to review that film. So excited to do that film. But let me ask you this. Are your scores that you've been giving for 166 episodes are they objective or are they subjective both so it's a combo it depends on the like yeah like it's like do you believe dodgeball is objectively a 10 out of 10 for a comedy yeah right but you've even said that your scores aren't based off of genre yeah but i'm saying in its genre like it's flawless in its writing and intent of what it's going for like got it but it's it's generally objective to an extent, and then it's subjective. Like, I would say it's objective to up to eight points, and then two points are subjective. Mm, gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, I'm going to hit this film with a 6.8 because objectively it's, like, a 6.8 and subjectively, like, a zero out of two. Like dude, I you're just, starting to sweat, dude. <laughs> dude, they, dude, we're, they just we're sweat so the sweaty. Yeah. Oh, sure. I'm really curious. Hold on. Before I give you my score... 6.8 is cool. But like before I give you my score, like I'm we we talked about this a little bit, but like I'm genuinely curious. Like, why was it so hot everywhere? And you know, you asked me a question. You said, was the sweat real? And I'm gonna tell you right now, it wasn't. And it's not because I read something, it's not because I did research, it's because there's one scene where they're all sitting there and they're sweating every scene, but the one scene they're sitting there sweating and they're getting taught about the MIG. And then he realizes that the girl he met at the bar before was actually the girl who's going to teach him the next day. She walks in, she's not sweating at all. And they're all in the same place. Sweat. They just dumped water on every single one of the male actors just to make it sweatier. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they are in California. I know, but like, it's not that hot in California. You you don't sweat everywhere. Everyone was sweating. Like every different people don't sweat. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like it was purposefully extra sweaty for sure. Um, one more thing I wanted to touch base on too. Yeah, please do. When they're fucking for the first time, Mav and what's her name? Kelly. No, fuck is her name you just <laughs> when they're fucking for the first time they're going in dude she like licked his neck like he was like tongue in her tongue like like they were tongue in like like it was intense like i, I very rarely usually it's those like just all lip kisses oh, what is it what? you know that <laughs> the all lip kisses this right. was like they were full-fledged making out she straight up licked his whole neck at one point I was like, whoa, like we're, they, they exchanged a lot of spit. I was impressed. That's how you gotta do it. I, it, it was impressive. All right, good for them. And to touch one more topic on the homoeroticness and every scene of that sex scene, Tom Cruise was taking up more of the frame. Like this was clearly, I know. Cause I wasn't even really in, <laughs> interested in it when I was happening. So like when you're saying there was a lot of spit, like I, just, it wasn't like, a good why s- weren't you inter- interested? It's because there was more man in it than woman on yeah, every was, scene. Yeah. Scene. Cause she was like, well, she was on her back. Right. Yeah. And it was just like, <laughs> Tom Cruise. like 80% of the frame was him. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. And that's why like, I, I just went this, on my phone. This movie was, was like, like made yeah. for bros, men questioning bros. their sexuality. Bros. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay. Anyway, my so score, your, my okay. score is going to be a six point. 
Nein. One up. <laughs> One up. Swag. Okay, yeah, cool. I fucked with it. Yeah. I fucked with the fact that I broke down the eight points objective, two points objective, because I, I feel like that's like kind of where I stand with it. Yeah. And it's only necessary that, you know, Top Gun, Sweaty Man, 69. I see what you did there. You know, come on. Word. All right, we're so, so, boy. So you want to hit some plus? We'll wrap this up, and we're going to drop in um, and do this episode the next couple of days. The, I love that, the yeah. Top Top, Maverick, we're so going to we'll give it to you what you guys want, because Top Gun Maverick was, as you said, the highest grossing film of the year, and it's fantastic. Which I didn't know until you mentioned something. I <laughs> yeah. was like, was it? Oh, yeah. I knew it was like top five. Highest I, grossing Tom Cruise movie of all time, which yeah. is intense, because he's done a lot of big ones. So yes, he has. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hit some plugs. Let's go with it. Yeah, okay. um, don't get too crazy because no, it's all good. You already know what the fuck going on, is John Smith. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm fucking a rapper. You can check out on hey. IG at mg underscore Johnny Smith. You can type in on Google John X Smith, Just but you don't need to say the X. Um, <laughs> you don't need to say the X. And uh, yeah, I just dropped the tape recently. Uh, it's called Muddy. Um, and also, if you live in the uh, L.A. area, uh, I got a show coming out on November 23rd. Hopefully, we have this episode hey. beforehand, so I sh- I'm sure we will. Uh, November 23rd, it's at El Cid. Um, doors open at 5 o'clock. So if you want to come slot, um, be there performing. So it's all good. Word. I didn't mean to like interrupt as you were like. No, no, I don't care. But we're doing another episode like tomorrow, and I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> yeah, definitely go check out that show at the Viper Room in California on the 23rd. El Cid. Not El- the Viper Room. Oh, it's not the Viper Room. It's called El Cid, yeah. Okay, we're, no, my bad. In LA. <laughs> Fuck. I be <laughs> You're good. It, it hopefully will be out. At first, when you first said if it will be out, I was like, of course we'll be out. Yeah. I was like, oh, no. I have like a little cue right yeah, now. Yeah, 23rd, yeah. So yeah. we'll be good. We'll uh, get it out try, Yeah, I got you. Uh, all right, thanks, everybody. We got John Smith hitting it with 6.9 with a super gay rating. <laughs> I'm going to hit with a 6.8. <laughs> I appreciate everybody for listening to the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to be coming in hot with the heat with Top Gun Maverick. Love all y'all. Catch you next episode. Deuces. Peace.